This is a three-barreled Korean hand cannon. They are very popular in Korea, and they're very simple, wick-fired or, or hot needle-fired hand cannons, and each barrel has its own touch hole, and they were generally put on the ends of poles. They're a little bit on the primitive side. The Turks had largely abandoned matchlocks for a new type of firing mechanism developed in Spain, one ignited by means of a flintlock called Chomok by the Turks. They are known as migales to modern collectors who readily identify them by their distinctive style. The term migale is Spanish and refers to mercenary bandits who favored the guns. The things that identify this as a Turkish weapon are the gold damascening on the octagonal barrel which is also made of Damascus steel, the six-sided but the abrupt angle at the wrist and the unique rear sight with the triangular peak. Well, the sights on Turkish guns are also uh, unique in that they have what a hooded sight, actually, where a hole was bored through this arch. And another type of uh, Turkish gun will also find a higher arch sight of graduations with multi-faceted holes through them as a form to, to uh, find elevation. Migale barrels could be rifled or smoothbored, but all were ignited by means of a flint. The lock is a classic Turkish Migale lock. It's got the ring. They love the Migale lock because it was very easy using this large ring to open the jaws to put in a new flint and you could also get tremendous leverage to tighten it back down. This is a very sturdy lock. The Migale lock's mainspring was also more powerful than other flint locks. This feature created a greater shower of sparks and reduced the chance of misfire. However, the Migale was not universally adopted throughout the Middle East. In parts of the Ottoman Empire, particularly Morocco, there was a preference for a long slender musket with a lock called the schnappons, derived from the Dutch word for pecking hen. This Moroccan schnappons is the classic weapon of North Africa. It was used by the Berbers for hundreds of years. It was first introduced to Morocco from England and Holland in the late 16th, early 17th century. The peculiar thing about the Moroccan weapon is the very thin wrist. It still retains a little of the Turkish angle at the wrist, but then it swells out into this enormous fishtail-shaped butt. Some of these guns have thicker wrists and narrower butts, but many of the finest Moroccan schnappances have the classic fishtail shape. This is a highly decorated example that must have belonged to somebody very, very significant in the Berber hierarchy. Certainly a chieftain. It's got ivory, gold, silver, and it's extraordinarily good quality. It even has a Damascus barrel. Normally Moroccan weapons aren't quite that sophisticated. This is one of the most sophisticated known. Unlike the Moroccans, Algerians preferred migales, often decorating them with red coral. By the 19th century, the many cultures of the Orient had created a variety of distinct long guns. The evolution of the pistol would be limited almost exclusively to the Islamic world, and once again, the Turks would lead the way. This is a classic indigenous Turkish pistol. It's Turkish with a very heavy, high repousse silver decorating the butt and the heavy, high repousse silver decorating the muzzle. It's extensively damascened in gold in the Turkish manner, both on the lock and the barrel. It has stones along the wrist of the pistol, which is, again, characteristic almost exclusively of the Ottoman pistol. 